What is going on guys? This is the great one. Now I said that I will stop doing reviews because I just... To be honest, I'm very self-critical, if that's the right way to say. So I didn't find my reviews entertaining, so I decided to stop, but many of you were asking for it. Like, seriously, every video was spammed, where the fuck is Raw and Smackdown review? So if you guys really want that, I guess I will be doing those, but one thing is that... When I'm doing these Raw Smackdown reviews, I want it to be more like a free, easy video, I don't know how to call it, but simply just not cut as much, just talk anything, get a little out of topic or anything like that really, you know, to be just myself and talk and talk about my thoughts, make a lot of mistakes because my English sucks, but still. Now, since I haven't done a re last week's Raw and SmackDown reviews, uh, I would like to say that I enjoyed SmackDown much more than I enjoy than I enjoyed Raw. Raw was alright. I would give it like six out of ten, and SmackDown was like seven out of ten or even eight because last week's SmackDown was much, much, much better than the first SmackDown we got. You know, the de debut SmackDown of Brand Splits SmackDown. So first Raw was better, and second SmackDown was better, and now we see seen Raw, and we're going to see SmackDown tonight. So we are going to see which show is going to be better, and uh, I gotta be honest, if you can't beat tonight's show, you have a big fucking problem. <laughs> what the fuck was this shit? So I'm watching Raw. I'm always watching Raw in the morning, because... Raw is 3 a.m. in my country. I, I, I'm not going to waste so many time, so many energy just to watch a show that maybe is going to leave me disappointed. Uh, so I watched, watch these shows in the morning. But pay-per-views I watch live. So I'm watching this show and I gotta be honest, after first hour I just stopped the video I watched on the internet. WWE Network is not the only way to watch Raw. Duh. Because you can't actually watch Raw Network. You can watch it after my... Okay, it doesn't matter. So I'm watching this Raw. I paused it. I slept for one hour because it was so boring. I don't know why, but it's probably one of those rare times where I actually fall asleep during Raw. To be honest, the only reason I wasn't skipping a lot of Raw is that I could actually do a review. And now I'm regretting it because I... Probably not going to talk about it as much as I thought I would. So the opening segment was with uh, Enzo Amore, Big Cass, and then Jericho interrupted them. And then he said he has a partner, Kevin Owens came out. Jericho and Owens have great chemistry. This segment was pretty alright, you know. I'm not a fan of uh, every show opening with Jericho and Enzo. Like, gotta do something different. But it was entertaining. Jericho is gold. He's so freaking entertaining. I can't even tell you. Jericho was pretty funny. I enjoyed the segment and we got a match between Jericho and Enzo Amore again. Anyway... Jericho won this match by disqualification. He was supposed to win the match by hitting a code breaker, you know, but he was cheating by Kevin Owens distracting the referee, so Big Ass came in. Big booted, wow, my pronouncing, top notch. He big, big booted, booty. Sorry, I'm not from England, America, so deal with it. Enzo Amori was disqualified, so Chris Jericho won the match anyway. Then we got a squash match between Braun Strowman and Jorel Nelson. I don't know who, he, who, who is this guy, but anyway, it was obviously a squash match. Braun Strowman defeated another local jobber and uh, pretty good stuff. The first time, for the first time ever, we actually got an entrance for this jobber. He even got, had a theme song and when he, he was interviewed, he didn't say a damn thing. Because he knows he's stepping in the ring with Braun Strowman, so... We got Titus O'Neil versus Darren Young. I mean, I know it's supposed to be entertaining, friend versus friend, but who actually gives a single crap? Like, to be honest, do you give a shit? I, I, I'm completely honest, I'm not trying to suck WWE's... ...thing. <laughs> But that's just how it is. It sucks. If it sucks, I'm going to tell you that it actually sucks. 
Darren Young win this match the same way Titus O'Neil won in previous week. You know, a roll up and that's how it ended. Then we got a Seth Rollins promo about Finn Balor. Pretty alright. The whole thing about Finn Balor's name origins was pretty cringy. Like it was supposed to be funny, but nobody laughed. It was dead silence. Crowd sucked. Crowd was. Jesus Christ, what the fuck are they doing? Fun fact about me when I was 10, 9, 15 years old, I was actually playing at funerals. I'm not even lying, I heard bigger crowd pops in these funerals than in tonight's Monday Night Raw. And I guess. Something tells me that that it actually says something. Then the commentators talked about the latest WWE Scooby-Doo movie and that's where the part when I wanted to commit suicide. Then we got a great match between Sheamus and Cesaro and one thing is, these matches are great. Sheamus as a wrestler is fucking great, Cesaro is even better, but the thing is, nobody gives a shit about Sheamus. And Cesaro is well-liked, well but he never gets that push because of probably backstage politics. Anyway, the match was great, but one thing about me is that I cannot, for some reason, I can't enjoy a match if there is no real good story behind it. If I'm not invested in these characters, I just don't feel it for some reason. There are some ex exceptions, you know, to that, but at the end of this match, nothing came out of it. To me, I don't know about you guys, maybe you enjoyed it, the match was great, so there's that. And by the way, it's R1 again, just like last week. Then we got a video package by Randy Orton and Brock Lesnar. That was great. That was one of the best parts of Monday Night Raw. Maybe like 50% uh, of entertainment value of this Raw was in this package. Brock Lesnar used a lot of bad words in this promo. They were beeped. Obviously, it's PG, but by... But one more thing is that have you noticed that in recent weeks we get a lot of TV 14 moments, like seriously so many sexual references, all that kind of stuff, it's just wow, like even freaking Roman Reigns, the kids guy, used some of these, we will talk about that later, but let's move on with a Dudley Boys vs Neville and Sin Cara, who give a shit, I don't, Sin Cara is still coming out with Lucha, Lucha, kill me, anyway. We got this match, Neville and Sin Cara obviously won, and the Dudley boys, I don't know if you noticed, but by, but Bully Ray, Bubba Ray Dudley, whatever, looked very pissed at D1. I, th I thought like he's going to turn heel, he's already heel, but he's going to turn at D1, you know, beat the shit out of him and start his gimmick that he used in TNA. You know, Bully Ray, he's probably not going to use that name. Maybe he will, I don't know, but it would be really great because he was actually entertaining and right now the Dudleys are just useless, to be honest, in the WWE right now. They were a great tag team back then, but now, fuck them. So maybe, I guess, I actually believe that in some weeks, in, in a week or two, Bully Ray is going to turn on d Just don't come back with that religious gimmick, no, no, don't do it. Then we got Rusev and Lana celebration. That... Uh, the only thing I liked about it was how Roman Reigns act. Like, he's when he's in a mid-card, I can deal with it. He's entertaining in a mid-card. I don't know why, but... No, one more thing, he got a huge crowd pop. I hope WWE doesn't confuse this. You see, here's the thing. If Roman Reigns is not on the main event card... Is not in the main event picture, people don't actually hate him, you know, because he's not in his spotlight. In a mid-card, he's, he's great, to be honest, like, I'm not the biggest fan, but, but he's great. Well, I just don't feel like he's supposed to be in the main event picture if fans don't want it. So he got a huge crowd, and I hope, I hope WWE doesn't think like this, that, well, fans like him now, so we're going to put him in the WWE Championship match. No, it won't happen. In mid-card, people want him because it's a mid-card and uh, he's facing Rusev and Rusev is a heel, you know, he hates Americans, all that kind of shit, so I think it's logical to cheer for Roman Reigns. Anyway, I like how he came and said that he's the best man, he drank some champagne, like, that's really weird to watch after he just came out of, out of suspension. suspension. Uh, <laughs> that's really weird, he went, drank some champagne, and of course he challenged Rusev for the United States Championship, he didn't accept it, the fight happened, Roman Reigns pushed Rusev into the Lana, she fell on the cake, and you know, typical PG stuff. 
One more thing I really liked about this segment is that Roman Reigns said that, that something is disappointing, just like Lana was disappointed on her wedding night in bed. Sasha Banks, Diana Brooke, you know my thing about Diana Brooke, I skipped this. And Sasha Banks won and uh, Diana Brooke is now banned from ringside at the pay-per-view SummerSlam. And then we got a ring postitis segment between uh, the club. That wasn't a segment, that was a promo. They cut the promo about how they are doctors and then they diagnosed Big E with ring postitis because they smashed his balls, you know. They even got his balls in a jar. I wonder if wrestling is fake. That was pretty funny. I mean, that's okay. Then we got Kofi Kingston versus Lou Gallows. Lou Gallows won this match. And they wanted to do the same thing to Kofi Kingston, but Xavier Woods attacked him with a chair, so they ran away. Then we got another Scooby-Doo moment. That was the same moment I wanted to commit another suicide, but I'm still alive somehow. Anyway, then we got Mick Foley into the ring. He invited Daniel Bryan and talk about Brock Lesnar, talk about Randy Orton situation, all that kind of shit. It was pretty alright, but th at the end of it, none of this made sense because Rusev came out, he talked trash. And then we got Cesaro into the ring. He talked about he deserves a United States Championship title shot because he won against Sheamus twice. So we got a match between Cesaro and United States Champion, Rusev for the United States Championship. This was so predictable, like we know he's going to face uh, Roman Reigns in SummerSlam, so how we are supposed to believe that uh, Cesaro is going to win? How? Match was pretty alright, you know, Cesaro is a great wrestler, we all know that, but uh, Sheamus interrupted, kicked Cesaro in the face, Rusev kicked again and he won the match and in the ringside Rusev was speared by Roman Reigns and that's how we got Monday Night Raw ending with a spear with Roman Reigns music it's so familiar we get the same nightmares I don't know I was really disappointed on this Raw I thought like maybe at the end something is going to happen but nothing really happened and uh, that was really sad. I just really hope that they don't confuse the crowd reactions for Roman Reigns because we all know this is not just, oh, now we like Reigns. No, no, it's, it's none of that. Anyway, I think I'm almost guaranteed that SmackDown today is going to be much better than Raw. You can't, you just can't make it worse, like really. And that was a shitty Raw. I give this Raw f four and a half out of ten. There were some cool moments, I guess, but nothing really that surprised me or I thought was really entertaining. Like, Anyway, thanks for watching. If you want to help the channel, make sure to press that like button. And uh, if you have any free dollar one to make sure to donate uh, in the Patreon. The links in the description. Thank you very much. It really helps me out with production and all that kind of stuff. Thanks for watching. The great one. Peace, love. And Hawks, see you tomorrow on SmackDown's Review.